So colonialism, commercialism, and cultural replacement. These were three paradigmatic shifts that took place with respect to non-native perception of the Hawaiian Islands from roughly two centuries ago to present. When I was eight years old, because my dad was in the Navy, I moved from the island of Oahu to a small city called Marysville, Washington State. I was really surprised that none of my peers really knew where, about where I was from, and all that they knew about Hawaii was that Pearl Harbor was there, a naval base. And they actually didn't even know that there were airports there, which was very interesting. <laughs> um, so to understand this, let's go back 200 years. In 1789, Captain Cook and other European explorers discovered the west side of the island of Oahu. The end of this discovery ended with 30 Hawaiians who were shot and killed and a couple of uh, explorers that were killed. As per usual, the indigenous deaths were a little bit uh, more than the explorer deaths. The shift, the first shift occurred roughly 100 years later. This is the Annexation Club. This was a group of non-native businessmen, all American, who went to the Hawaiian Islands and realized that there were a lot of marketable, uh, naturally abundant goods, such as sugarcane and pineapple. Once they realized this, they wanted to make money off of it. So they recruited the support of the United States government, sent troops, locked Queen Liliuokalani, who is the reigning queen of Hawaii in her palace, and basically forced the entire island of Hawaii to hand the government over to, the, to these businessmen so that they could make money. So the first shift was from colonialism to commercialism. Initially, people thought that Hawaiians were savages and that the only um, opportunities at, in Hawaii were uh, exploration. The shift occurred when it was discovered that there are many marketable goods and that Hawaii should be a financial venture. The second shift what occurred when the United States government realized the strategic location of the Hawaiian Islands with respect to Japan and decided to make Pearl Harbor. This was uh, reflected in American media with Elvis Presley's Blue Hawaii in 1961 and the popular 1980s hit show Magnum P.I. Both of these um, both of these television programs reflect a cultural replacement. When Americans think of Hawaii at this point in time, they're mainly thinking about military occupation of Hawaii, what veterans are going through. And while I, I can certainly agree that veterans are part of the culture as I lived on Pearl Harbor and my dad was in the Navy and that's how my parents met, I would argue that the systematic ignorance of indigenous culture in Hawaii is what's highly problematic and damaging to culture and tradition. Now, I'm sure you've all seen Moana or have heard of it, and this is a huge success for Hawaiian culture. The popularization and continual distribution of um, accurate representations of Polynesian and Hawaiian culture is huge because Hawaiian culture is on a strict decline. In fact, my concern is that when I have kids and my kids have kids that I won't really have any culture to share with them because uh, Hawaiian language is on the decline and and up until now, representation of Hawaii in the media has been Lilo and Stitch. While I'm a fan and I love Lilo and Stitch, um, it really wasn't too accurate of a portrayal of where I'm from. And the reason why Moana is such a success for Hawaiian culture is because it represents authentic Hawaiian dress, music, traditions, and mythology. In fact, the lead actress, Alihi Carvalho, actually represents the racial ethnicity a distribution in Hawaii. She is Puerto Rican and Hawaiian, like me, and this represents that there are very few pure Hawaiians left as a result of cultural integration from when the United States annexed, the, uh, annexed Hawaii. So, in conclusion, what I want to say is that there's a lot more to Hawaii than plastic lays and pineapples. Um, my, like I'm saying, my concern for Hawaii is that I'm not going to have much of my culture to share with my kids. And so should the world lose Hawaiian culture, there would be a lot of people who have an innate respect for natural resources. We value family and storytelling, and we have a beautiful musical and um, even a tradition of dance. Thank you.